Welcome to G-Reminders. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into the feature that makes G-Reminders stand head and shoulders above all other reminder apps in the marketplace, our powerful and flexible reminder templates. From the main screen, click on Client Reminders on the menu to access client reminder templates. You may see a generic 24-hour reminder that is set up automatically depending on the choices you made when you signed up for your free trial. Select New Client Reminder Template. You can accomplish everything you need to set up client reminders on this screen. The template is segmented into various sections. At the top, you choose what type of reminder or notification you wish to create. If you do nothing in the Criteria section, the reminder will be sent to everyone where a phone number and or email address is found in the event. We'll come back to this section in a moment. You then choose what type of reminder, text, email, or even voice you would like to send and the timing, either before or after an appointment, by hours, days, months, or even a specific time. Finally, you can create a custom reminder message. So let's start using the advanced criteria feature. We'll begin at the top of the list where criteria is dependent on how an appointment is booked on our calendar. As you may know, G Reminders allows you to send reminders on events booked directly onto your calendar, or you can use our automated scheduling feature. Either way will trigger reminders. If you use automated scheduling, your clients will automatically receive an invite to the event, confirming the date and time, and you can include special instructions with the invite. If you schedule an event directly on your calendar and you would like to add specific information to the event description, you must do that manually for each event. You can, however, create an initial booking notification in G Reminders and automate that process. So let's set the purpose as initial booking, so the message is triggered soon after the appointment is placed on the calendar. In the Criteria section, we'll start with the first criteria at the top of the list and create a criteria for an event booked not via G Reminders. In other words, it is an event booked manually onto the calendar, not via automated scheduling. We'll indicate that we want this to go out as an email and the timing is immediately after the event is created. We can then edit our content to include anything we would like our clients to see after they book their appointments. You can add links to additional information, intake forms, whatever you need. Next, we'll create a standard reminder that will be sent out only when individuals fail to confirm an appointment. When clients confirm their appointments with you, you can receive notifications by email or text of the confirmation and a check mark or an X will appear in the event title on your calendar. We'll choose Reminder for the purpose and select the criteria Event Status is Unconfirmed. This will be a text reminder and we'll schedule it to go out at 8 a.m. the morning of the appointment only to those clients who have not confirmed their appointment. Because our goal is to get them to confirm, we'll start the message with Reply Yes to Confirm. Hopefully they'll get the message that this is important to us, and if you schedule appointments with them in the future, they are more likely to confirm with the first reminder. Next, we'll use the most common custom criteria, Event Title. In this example, the event title will contain the word or phrase, Initial Consultation. We'll schedule this as a 24-hour text reminder. We can include the reason for the appointment in the message since it will only be sent to individuals who have scheduled an initial consultation. Because this is the first time we'll be meeting with this individual, we can also use the criteria and schedule a text reminder to be sent a couple of hours prior to the meeting that includes a link to Google Maps. This way, our new client will now know where to find us. Believe me, clients love this. The next custom criteria is Calendar Name. Let's select contains the text instead of the word or phrase. Here's the difference. Text can be a series of any alphanumeric characters 
where word or phrase is exactly that. So when we use it here, if the calendar name is an email address, we just have to indicate that the characters Mary in this example are found somewhere in the email address. We'll select SMS Reminder to be delivered 24 hours prior to the appointment. Now in the content, we can let our client know who they will be meeting with. Our advanced criteria is expandable, so we can add either AND or OR. AND adds more specificity to our reminder. This reminder will only be sent to appointments made on Mary's calendar when the title contains the word or phrase initial consultation. So our reminder can be just as specific, so our client is not only reminded about when the appointment will take place, but what it's concerning and who it's with. Just a quick note about organizing your reminder templates when using custom criteria. Our system reads the templates from top to bottom. Therefore, you'll want to arrange your templates from more specific to more generic. In this example, the reminder with no custom criteria is at the bottom, where it should be. But in the current configuration, if an appointment for an initial consultation with Mary was scheduled, our system would fire the first reminder template as the template does meet one of the criteria. So we need to move the more specific criteria to the top of the list. To rearrange the order of your templates, click the Reorder button. We'll just move this template to the top of the list and save. Now reminders will fire correctly, as the system will eliminate any criteria not met at the top of the list and move down until it reaches the template for all reminders. Now back to setting up custom criteria. Next we'll use the criteria for location. Again, we'll use contains the text and include Zoom as the location. Because when we schedule a Zoom meeting, the Zoom link in the location will contain the characters Z-O-O-M. We'll indicate this is a 24-hour email reminder. And include the link to our meeting by using the location variable. We'll create a text reminder for this meeting that will also alert our client five minutes prior to the Zoom call. And we can add the Zoom variable by selecting it from the variable drop-down list. There are many variables to choose from. In fact, if you select First Web Meeting Link Detected, our system will automatically find the first Zoom, WebEx, GoToMeeting, Teams, or other meeting link automatically, and will also shorten the link in the reminder as well. The next criteria we can select is Event Description. Now there is almost unlimited information that can be contained here. Let's look at a scenario where you ask your customer questions during automated scheduling. In this case, are you over or under 18? If the invitee answers under 18, a parent or guardian's phone number will be required so a reminder can be sent to both parent and child. When we set up reminders, we can let our standard reminder go out to an individual who is over 18, but we can set up criteria that triggers a specific reminder when the text I am under 18 is found in the description. We'll use the variable for including the child's name and be specific that a parent or guardian will be included in the appointment. Both will receive the text reminder. Again, we can expand the criteria to indicate who the meeting will be with based on the calendar name. Next, we can select event type name as a criteria for sending reminders. The event type name is used with GReminders automated scheduling. So we include the name of the event type in the criteria and then use it in the reminder message so our clients will understand the reason for the meeting. A criteria can also be created by the event start time. For example, let's say that you meet with clients after normal business hours and there are specific instructions they will need to have in order to enter your building. You don't want to confuse clients who meet with you during regular hours so you include the instructions only for those who meet with you late in the day. 
In this example, a note is included indicating that only the north entrance is unlocked after hours. You can also trigger reminders based on the event end time as well. The next criteria is only available to Microsoft Outlook, Office 365, and Exchange users. Outlook allows you to categorize appointments. You can then schedule reminders based on the category or categories selected. We'll create a follow-up reminder based on the category follow-up. You can select a category anytime following a meeting and before the reminder is scheduled to be sent. We'll have this reminder trigger a month after the original meeting. In this example, we include our booking calendar link in the reminder so our clients can quickly and easily schedule another appointment using online scheduling. In addition to custom criteria, you can include open source liquid template language in your reminders that are rendered according to the specific situation. This might seem complicated to those unfamiliar with coding, but if you're not a computer geek, don't worry. We can supply you all the code that you need to copy and paste into your reminder. In this example, our event title contains the word or phrase outside appointment, which we include for times when we meet clients at their homes or businesses. We may not wish to include a specific time, but rather an arrival window. We can see how the code will be rendered by clicking on the preview button. You can see in the sample data used in the preview, we are letting our clients know that we will arrive anytime during a two hour window. The code you see here can be found by clicking the link directly under the content window. You'll learn by simply changing one number in the code you can change your time range. Before we end this video, let's take a quick look at personal reminders. You can see that the setup is nearly identical to client reminders, except you indicate who will receive the reminder, typically you or a member of your staff. We'll include an initial booking notification. We want to alert a notary in the office of an upcoming appointment that will require his or her services. We'll use the criteria when the event title includes the word or phrase signing. Send an email immediately after the appointment is scheduled. We'll include a simple message, but since this is a reminder the staff member may be familiar with, we can also use variables to let this person know when we'll need them in the subject. Next, we can add as many as 10 email addresses in the recipient list. In this case, just the notary in the office. There may be multiple types of meetings where we need this staff member's services. We can trigger the same reminder under multiple conditions by adding additional criteria using OR. With G-Reminders, you have a powerful tool that will not only help you reduce your no-shows, but will help your clients and staff prepare for meetings. This can be crucial to the success of your business. We continue to add criteria and look forward to hearing your ideas. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can keep updated on G Reminders features. If you haven't started your free trial of G Reminders, just go to greminders.com and click on Try It Free. Happy scheduling!